My name is Inge and I work for Red Geographics in the Netherlands. And today I'll be talking about how a fun tutorial became our side business. First, I'll give you a short introduction into my background and history with Red Geographics. And then I'll talk about what started all this, how we went about it and where we are now. I do wanna add a, a disclaimer. Um, this is not meant to be promotional. I'm just very enthusiastic about this. So my name is Inge van Dalen, and I'm from the south of the Netherlands. Um, at home, we have several cats. Uh, I like to take pictures and go for a walk. Uh, I study Chinese and tourism, both of which have very little to do with cartography. And as if that isn't random enough, uh, I got my job playing badminton. That's where I met Hans, the owner of Red Geographics. Uh, he's a board member of NASIS and will also be presenting, so make sure you check out his presentation as well. Um, and last year I talked about becoming our cartographer and also already mentioned a little bit with what we were doing. Um, some of you may remember. Anyway, um, since I learned everything from scratch, I quickly found out what parts I love about this job. And it turns out it's quite a lot. Um, best and actually most difficult part is getting creative. And that brings me to that particular Friday. See, Hans implemented Friday fun days. And that means doing things you like that aren't necessary. Not necessary to keep the business running. You don't have to be productive. You just do something you enjoy. And over time, we made sure to find cool stuff to try out. Um, and one time Hans came with one of Tom Patterson's tutorials. Uh, that's the picture you see on the left. He has his own website, Shaded Relief, and he makes his own tutorials about a lot of uh, subjects. And this particular one is the tutorial on Landsat 8. You go to the Earth Explorer of USGS, see the picture on the right. And you can zoom in and literally look for all the places on Earth you like. Um, if there are images available with the right quality and other settings you want, like cloud coverage, uh, you can download the files. And with Photoshop, you can make them come alive. Because this is what the images look like raw and unedited. And this is actually part of an image I'm making for the launch of satellite Landsat 9, um, the places where the Kennedy Space Center is located. And that's from where Landsat 9 will be launched. Um, I'm still working on this, but here's a little sneak peek. Um, I've zoomed in a bit. Um, this is where you can also see the launch complex. Uh, anyway, back to the tutorial. Um, the tutorial focuses on how to edit these into natural colored, beautiful scenes. And it does say natural color, but if you have seen anything I've made yet, you know, I don't always go for natural, and when I don't, I go all out, because yeah, why not? For example, check out this print of uh, Lena Delta in Siberia. I've downloaded several ones from the same area, but during different times. And as you can see, there is a lot of ice, um, and I've enhanced the colors a little bit to bring out the beautiful blue in it. But then going in the opposite direction, you end up with this. Yeah, I, I nicknamed this one Pink Fire. I don't think I have to explain why. Uh, and I love both images. Um, this print might be a bit too much for some people, but um, yeah, I, I don't really care. <laughs> I, like, I like it. Um, but the cool thing is it's, it's a matter of taste and what you like or what you don't like. Um, but later on, I'll show you what we made with this print. But yeah, it's, it's not for everyone. I can do natural too, because let's be honest, Mother Nature does a good enough job. And I'm sure you can all agree, being in the field we're in, that our planet is a beautiful place. And I particularly love the water with the swirls of the current and the different colors that are visible within them. Um, Hans on the other side is more of the sandy areas. 
He's the desert man. Uh, I'll show you one of his business cards. This is this is Hans's business card. And this was my first one. And this is the second one. You might recognize this. This is Lena Delta again. I might have a recurring theme here. But every time uh, we run out of business cards, um, we get to choose a new design. And it's difficult every time. And I'll demonstrate that with the next slide. This location is Kandyar Massive. It's a rock formation in Russia. It looks like a crater, but it's actually formed by volcanic rocks that were pushed up a long time ago. Um, it's some, actually a much more complicated process. Um, and as interesting as that is, uh, I'm more concerned about what's going on on the surface. And often I have the same issue. There are many awesome color schemes, ingredients, which ones do you work to, which ones do you pick to work with? Because I like all of it. And it makes it very difficult for me to decide which one is the one I'm gonna go for. Um, they all have the same base, but they feel very different, but you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna use the same thing over and over again, because you have so many other possibilities. Um, fun fact. Uh, I actually reached out to a custom shoemaker here in the Netherlands um, and wanted to see if they were interested in using one of our prints. Um, and they are known for their fun and brightly colored shoes. So that's why I sent the upper right one with the yellow in it and asked like, hey, can you do something with this? Um, they actually ordered a sample with a print and this is how it turned out. How cool is that? It's just a pair, an actual pair of shoes with our design printed on it. Unfortunately, they decided not to continue with this yet. Because um, one of the issues with the shoes was the image placement. The manufacturer prints the entire image out on a big patch of leather and cuts the pieces out randomly. So you have no control where that part of the image comes where. And where to put the image on a product is a whole different story altogether. Let's look into that. For starters, the seam is often an issue. It cuts, your, it cuts off your print and it doesn't flow nicely. The images we have are not made of repeated symbols or prints and every edge ends differently. So it's hard to combine without leaving a harsh border. You want to make sure that the areas um, match the color and the print where the seams meet, if, if at all possible. Like this sports bag, um, it's made with the Tamman Rasa design Hans has made. You have a lot of different parts on this bag. You have the ends, the sides, the, the top part, the bottom part, and you all want to make sure they nicely mix together. And you have a fairly big image, but you want to keep using the same part to keep the flow and the gradient so you have to keep them matching together. This is how it turned out. Um, as you can see, it's, it flows quite nicely, but at some parts it doesn't really work, but there's only so much you can do and it all depends on the print. Designs without harsh lines or borders are easier to work with. Uh, another example, when we look back at the Condor Massive, is all the edges look the same. So it's very easy to place. You don't really see where the seams are. And that's, that's kind of what you want. A bit more difficult was the Maniqua Gun print. This was actually an image Hans made from uh, the crater in Canada, Maniqua Gun. It's the first time we tried to print um, one of our own images onto a product. And this was kind of our, is this actually something we can do, try out? But as soon as the yoga pants came in, we just, we just went for it. And as you can see, there is a color gradient going on here. Um, and at the back, it doesn't really connect. I'll show you because I have it right here. Because you see the blue part and the pink, yeah, doesn't match. 
on the front, it's not really a big issue, but more so on the back. And you also see our logo, Red Geographics. We actually made, uh, we actually renamed the side business. Um, so this is also uh, one of a kind right now. Um, and I, I don't mind that in the back, it doesn't really match, but it's not really a sleek finish, but yeah, like I said, you can only do so much. Uh, you also want to consider what you want to highlight. Because when you place the print on a product, you need to figure out what it is that you find most important about the print and what areas you do not want to highlight. You need to keep in mind there is waste when you cut the fabric. Um, so you'll always miss a part where the seams are. Um, this is just the way that the program is designed. There's not much we can do about it. And it uses one image for both sides. Um, and when you check out um, the image on the left, you see um, a part sticking out kind of from the ice. And no matter how I place it, it would always become a random part of the dress. Um, so in the end, I designed it the way you see it right now. And now you see it on the back part. It kind of connects to the shoulder, to the front, but you still miss quite a bit. And everywhere else I tried, it turned out to out of nowhere. It wasn't connected and it just looked weird. I think I tried for like half an hour before I decided on this fit, but it often takes more time to place the product, to place the image on the product than to make the image itself. Um, just like the Tom and Russet print we just saw on the back, we tried to put that on a pair of yoga pants but when the darker rock formations are placed on the behind part of the pants, it's not a very flattering position. And it also doesn't really make sense to have the coolest part of your image down at the angles. So sometimes an image just doesn't work for a certain product. Just like colors, which is another thing to consider. And we quickly decided that desert colored yoga pants didn't work because they look too similar to skin color. You don't want to walk around looking like you're not wearing any pants at all. But then again, it could be solved with a nice color gradient, but you get the seams issue again. Um, in this picture, you see the Grand Canyon yoga pants, um, which have a little bit more color to them, but we decided against it. It's safer to make a laptop sleeve instead. We had some very cool pictures. Um, because we set up an online shop um, and not only did we do that, we also wanted to, we also wanted people to buy them. And as it happens, Hans likes to take pictures and I'm very happy posing with our products and we have to figure out how to sell them. Um, but still as our side business, it's not prioritized over our main business, which is pretty busy. Um, but we happily keep creating images in our downtown and make products for our own use, like notebooks. Um, another recurring theme. And this is what our customers get when they receive one of our trainings. Still, there are many unused images taking up a lot of space, so I'll need to sort that out eventually. But that's how we started Blue Geographics. The logo you see is made after one of my cats who has a damaged ear. Uh, and the logo is featured in every product we make. Um, we have big plans for Blue but now we just need the time. Thank you for watching my presentation. I know my cat doesn't really look excited, but I am. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to answer them all. And if you do see anything you like on our website, feel free to use the discount code. Enjoy the rest of NASIS.